Okay, now that we're recording, a good morning again. It's afternoon. Um, <laughs> we're going to begin with our attendance. Um, okay, let's begin with our attendance. Chad, you got the taking the got it. Wonderful. Okay, Mike here. Dan present. Thanks. Bree here. Thank you. Naomi. We'll come back. Stephanie. Present. Thanks. Alan. Okay, we'll come back. Chad. Here. Thanks. Gabe. Here. James. Present. Alex. Tell you it's going to be late. We'll come back. Taylor here, and Paul here. Thank you. Um, have quorum. We have quorum, so we will now begin with our chit approval of the agenda. Quick um, point of personal privilege. Go ahead. Um, you put me first on the voting stuff all the time. Do you mind switching up this meeting? Sure. Thank you. Um, is, is there any objections to the approval of today's agenda as written? Yes. Gotcha. Okay. Strike. Um, get a get a microphone, please. I also have a got two objections. Dan, then Paul. Strike two of Paul's resolutions. One being C, simply because he's been trying to suppress um, free speech. And point of order, we should refrain from impugning motives. That's a clear, clear part of the rules we've adopted. Well, that's good because I'm glad we're going to get some copies of the Roberts rules because then I'll know that. So I still move to strike C and D. I don't I don't know how to address this situation right now. Um, Heard. All right, the um, motion receives no second, so it dies to fall. I would just like to add um, the cross functionality uh, task force to the updates. Um, if we could just have a quick update for that. And there's some stuff we have to pick up as a group to complete that work. Um, yeah, let's put that right before open floor update. So after the ISRC update. Thank you, Chair. I have one more objection to the agenda. Yes, Dan. I'm, I I a motion, although I don't expect to get a, ses a second since Alan's not here, um, to completely do away with the Judiciary Committee announcements. For the record. As there's no second, the motion fails. Thank you, Dan. Um, yeah, on, you're welcome. Are there any other... <coughs> Just motion we continue the business okay. for the day right. wonderful let's continue share sure, updates chad you can go first um i have no real updates as far as uh chairs go i would encourage uh everybody um to start emailing your uh your amendments and resolutions uh, instead of using our chat uh, it's a little more formal that that way Thank you, Chad. I'm going to do my update. I'm going to be gone April 21st. Um, I also wanted to mention that's just a general update. I have seen a lack of decorum befitting a student government on in our chat, and I know tensions are very high right now, but I want us to maintain some civil relationships with one another. We don't have to like each other, but let's all remind ourselves to be kind. In other news, I would really like to organize some um, optional trainings for the incoming counselors, including how to facilitate a meeting, going through governing documents, committees and their descriptions and responsibilities, strategies to build community. Those are the big things that I think would be good, but I'm open to other input. Paul has agreed to help with this as long with, go along with Chad, and I would love any input from anyone who wants to be a part of this. So just shoot me a message if you are interested. Um, thank you. Also, I will be out for our next meeting. So if you're interested in helping Taylor, please let him know. Thanks. On to SACAB, Mike and Stephanie. Stephanie, would you like to go first? 
All right. Um, so um, a few things in the SACAB world. Um, first of all, um, one of the things I was on the docket this week is um, uh, we, had, we are going to one way or another address um, the lack of representation on the ABOD board. So um, the situation that many of you might know is that the ABOD board, um, or area board of directors has gone to a lot of executive sessions this, uh, this semester or this year. And every time they go into executive session, Stephanie is kicked out of executive session. That is our student representative, so is our faculty representative. Um, I've taken issue with this, and I'm going to make a point to have SACAB pass some legislation and then maybe get some support from all their institutions. We think this is wrong, um, and we honestly think we should. Um, this is a bigger issue on, on students not having votes on boards, especially on the university. Um, but look forward to some legislation. We're meeting this Wednesday to discuss that. Um, is there anything else I'm missing, Stephanie? That's the only thing I can think of for some reason. Um, the only other thing that I can think of was that elections are coming up with each respective institution, the same as ourselves that was brought up. Um, oh, and we went ahead and supported, I can't remember the specific language of what the ASCP is doing. Um, Oh, I can't remember, but they had brought um, an initiative to us and we went ahead and we supported that as SACAB as well today. Um, other than that, there's not much that we did other than that. Question for y'all, um, and I'll ask the advisors this if they're, they're here today as well. Um, I've been told by at least one candidate that their flyers are being taken down around the Tivoli. Um, is there a way that we can talk to uh, AHEC facility, like the, the facilities managers and, and inform them that we're having elections this next week and that it's a try I thing. Yes, um, send me their name. I will. I know we talked to personally. Um, the best way to do if your flyers are getting taken down is you go and give ACES your flyer and say, hey, elections are going on. What are you doing? Like, I know the guy who does this. So send me their name and I can personally go do that for you. Um, elections are coming up, so. The, the person's name who got their flyers taken down. Okay. Yes, Paul. Um, in one of my student organizations, we ran into similar issues with them taking down flyers in Tivoli, and they've said in the past that it's for events only. And so, yeah, that's what they told us. But I think we should. I agree with pushing that and its elections. I mean, Tivoli is like a central place for students to 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 be in, and so it's important we be able to flyer in there. And I'm, I'm sad to hear that flyers are being taken down. Thanks, Paul. On to Board of Trustees, Gabe. Okay. 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 So, um, I with the board, they're trying to see if the Colorado Trustee Network overall, they're trying to see if they can meet again. But with a lot of people who have very busy schedules, it's very still up in the air of whether the Colorado Trustee Network overall will meet once more. Um, and then there's also, um, I found out today that there is a CPR article on Colorado taxpayers and paying for like 35 private weddings and some issues with like money and MSU Denver being like involved in stuff. Um, but I don't have too much information on that, just that there's like an article published and they're kind of looking into it right now. Um, yeah. Thanks, Gabe. On to Budget Committee, Mike. Hello. Um, so not much of the Budget Committee, me and Armando are still balancing our books. But um, what I'm going to do is for Thursday, I'm going to set a time. Um, it's different than usual time. What we're going to do is I'm, everyone's invited to this meeting. We're just going to go line by line budget item. We're going to probably do some predictions for next year's council, what budget's going to look like. That's going to be Thursday. Um, and the video will be available. But um, yeah, if you have any thoughts about the budget, questions about the budget, uh, be there. Um, yeah, so I will send an invitation out shortly. Yes, Paul. I just request we do earlier on Thursday would be ideal for me, but if we can't do that, I understand. Um, Thursday's a packed day for me. We'll, we'll work on it. We'll work on it. Wonderful. On to Sustainability Committee, Taylor, and then I'll push it on to Alex. Um, I want to say ASCP, they're getting very excited for Earth Week, which is April 17th through the 21st. I know I will be tabling that Monday, doing a potting event that day. So please come stop by. And that Friday, I would love for us all to go participate in the amazing river cleanup. Um, that's all I have, but I know Alex has been working on some really cool projects. So I'll give him the floor. 
Um, I have no updates on the Beehive, and um, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't have any updates. Yeah. What time on Friday is the cleanup so I can be there? There's a, uh, you have to sign up for it, so I'll try and find that info close? and disseminate it to is the council close? again. Could you please Verify. forward that to me? Yeah. Okay, cool. Point of clarification, I believe it's at 1 o'clock or 1.30. Thank you, Paul. Well, there are different time slots that you can actually sign up for. I believe that it's from 10 to 11, 11 to 12, or 12 until 1. Um, they're not really that strict. The reason why they have those specific times that you need to sign up for is so then they can um, keep track of the equipment that they're going to be giving out. So you could stay for like half an hour if you wanted. That's fine. So. Is there a time where the T uh, SAC is going to try to be there all at the same time, or is it kind of just kind of be scattered out and we go whenever? I don't think we ever decided. Oh, okay. Okay, thank you, everyone. On to TSAC PR committee, Chad. You have no updates, just, uh, just elections and push out that, reshare any information about elections, please. Try and make this big call. Well. Uh, we've received the uh, flyers and stuff for the housing event later this month. We need to push that out on our social media. So I've sent you an email about it, Chad. Um, I can send it to the wider PR committee. Um, but yeah, we just need to get that out. Do you think we could boost some P some Earth Week stuff on our stuff for ACP? Yes. Wonderful. Um, <clears throat> okay, moving on to Policy Advisor Committee. Re. They canceled our our meeting this week um, from the university's end due to lack of items. So no update from that. Yes, I realize we have skipped the Judiciary Committee. On to James. Thank you, oh, Reed. Sorry. <laughs> sure. Thanks, Taylor. Uh, so some quick updates on what has been going on in the Judiciary Committee. We met yesterday. I know yesterday, our last week I said I would have an update more on Alan stuff. Unfortunately, I had some stuff going on with my foot at the beginning of the week, so I didn't get to the deans until later in the week. Um, they're still wanting us to work out some of the details to ensure we're uh, doing this the right way, uh, but for now, what I can hand out is the constitutional violations of Alan Williams. So basically, just a quick summarize. This shows off all of the things that Alan has violated since the passage of the Fifth and Sixth Amendment, uh, beginning on January 27th up until I believe beginning of March, right around the time I broke my foot. So that's where it ends. Uh, you are able to digest this with your own pleasure and utilize it in any way you want, but I thought I'd get this out to you guys so we have a more open process for you guys. Uh, lastly, the Dean, I contacted Dean Taylor Tack about just some of the issues we've been having in TSAC, and he thinks that TSAC would really benefit from a professional development training uh, regarding state, local laws, uh, federal laws, uh, training for both us, and I also mentioned for next year's TSAC, so that way issues like this aren't don't happen again and uh, it doesn't continue to hound us the entire uh, year so he wanted to try to do it as soon as the next week i realized that it's very short notice for us and i told him that so i said i try to get some times and dates that would work for a majority of the council so i will be in contact with him i would also ask that you guys please be in contact with me getting uh, any time and dates that are kind of open or available for you he said it should only run maybe 30 minutes i believe 30 minutes to an hour uh, but i do think this is will be really important for us um and I believe that's it. Thank you so much, James. On to the Faculty Student Affairs Committee. Back to you, Ree. Hi. OK, thanks again. Um, I wanted to sorry about my voice, everybody. I've been really sick. Um, Chad had sent, I think, as part as, of his work with PR, information to me to forward to Faculty Senate about the election trying to um, with a really impassioned message about getting their support to spread through canvas for students to be able to vote. And so we can really increase the uptake with voting. And um, Barbara had replied that she's going to get with Liz Goodnick, who's head of Faculty Senate, for ideas about getting that out to the whole faculty. And in the meantime, she's distributing it to her own team, her social work faculty and the student affairs committee that I'm on. So that's the update from that. Thank you. Re on to the Indigenous Student Resource Committee, Naomi. 
Um, on my end, uh, the majority of the time I've spent this week is just making sure our Indigenous students have the support that they need um, in response to uh, the news released about our remains being on campus and uh, just talking with NISA to see um, if there's any students who want to run for student government and promoting them to, or I'm sorry, encouraging them to run um, uh, and get their stuff in by yesterday. Um, so hopefully they got their stuff in and we are also setting up another meeting. We set up another meeting for um, next week to kind of discuss what they want out of a building on campus uh, for them or as like a gold mirror kind of replication, but the indigenous version of it. Um, and I don't know if Dan, Paul or Alex has anything else. That's just on my end. Um, a lot of that is news news to me. I know we've been working together on the house thing, or at least were for some time. We haven't met in a long time for this Indigenous Student Resource Committee. And so I, um, we really need to solidify a meeting time for the committee so this work isn't being, so you're not shouldering all of it. We can we can share in working on this and, um, and in doing so advance the work, I think. So just wanted to um, make that known. And I uh, second what Paul said there, so. I have nothing else to add, but I, I'm here for you. Thank you. I appreciate you guys. Um, we'll go to the cross functionality task force. Thank you. Um, so uh, Taylor and I have been meeting with the cross functionality task force, um, really solidifying around uh, gathering more data from students. That's our half, um, but also participating in the data gathering of faculty and staff around the proposed faculty workload reduction been in the works for a real long time. Um, as of right now, we've solidified a tentative timeline. I know solidified tentative is a little redundant or a little oxymoronic, but um, we ideally uh, between the 17th and the 28th of this month want to hold open listening sessions for staff and students. Uh, in addition to um, disseminating a Qualtric survey that we've created for students in this in this task force. Um, we really want to get more data so the university can make the right move on this proposal. Um, we'll need volunteers for moderating those listening sessions, and I would welcome council members who want to participate in that. Um, and I and I think in this next week's meeting, we should solidify um, a time and a date location, or maybe even in the interim in the week in between, because we are working on kind of a tight timeline. Um, in part, we want to get this work done before the school year is over. Uh, so um, I'll get more information to the PR committee on the Qualtrics survey. I know it's a survey on top of a survey on top of a survey, but it is an important one we need to get out. Um, and that's in part why we want to do these listening sessions. Maybe we can get some refreshments for them so we can bring some students in and, and get some perspective on it. I can send uh, a link to the existing survey. You all can get an idea of what it looks like. Um, and again, you know, for 417 through 428 is ideally when we want to have some of these uh, listening sessions for staff and students on our end, particularly students. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. And I want to say thank you for taking on the burden of a lot of this since I was unable to attend yesterday. On to open floor announcements slash updates. Dan, then Paul. So, um, <clears throat> so the, I continue the work with with the Dean of Students Office designing the program for people re justice impacted individuals. We had an event this week and there's only a couple of students there. Um, one of the barriers that we're running into or that I am is that uh, finding out and identifying students who identify as justice impacted already enrolled. We're working to create a pipeline from the prisons and, and even working to hopefully allow people in a year out to start earning credits at MSU Denver, kind of like concurrent enrollments. But my ask for everybody here is that if you hear of any students who are justice impacted in any way, whether their family, you know, they have parents or family in prison or jail or anything like that, um, to give them my information. And I can also put the fly the flyer um, for the program, which is called Justice uh, Scholar Alliance. Um, into the chat and they're also we'll have a table at sprinkling so highly encourage that we're working on getting scholarships and eventually record ceilings and all of that for milestones as as students progress through that so um please spread the word thank you do you have a direct question so oh, re i uh, um 
Yes, I wanted to ask Dan a question if I could. Go for uh, it. Dan, in your work, Dan, do you know, I I am, don't recall this in applying to MSU Denver. Is there any question about former incarceration or anything like that so that we would know about students or would that be considered um, something that might count against them and so it's not even asked? Well, it doesn't count against them, but there's this ban the box deal. And so a lot of... Yeah. Um, we're running into being able to put that even a voluntary question on the admissions application is not really a thing where work um, that's allowed right now. We're developing a survey yeah. maybe to give to all oncoming students, but that is a good idea. I've proposed that a lot. So um, well, hopefully in the future we can do that. But if nothing else, I mean, I think it could be part of the scholarship conversation and, and extra support so that people would see it's not meant to be burdensome or or um, what is the word? something that would be um, punitive, but more opportunistic and helpful. So in working with the scholarship and um, financial aid office, I think, and you could do that well, of course. <laughs> yep, we're in the works of that. Thank you, Rhea. I'll reach out if I have any questions or need your help with anything, if that's okay. Oh my gosh, I'm glad to help. Okay, thank you. Wonderful, on to Paul, then Naomi, Mike, then Alex. Um, I just wanted to extend again, the opportunity for collaboration on work. Um, Alex has taken that up in this last week and we've continued to put out some good work here. Um, and I also, you know, it's, I've been saying that for many weeks and it's been, there's been a little, little silence uh, on that. And I want to extend that invitation to members of the community, students, if you have ideas for what you'd like to see borne out as work on this council, feel free to email me at PNELSO22 at msudenver.edu, shoot me a Teams message. Um, or come into my office in Tivoli 307 when I'm in there. And I'd be happy to work with you. Um, thank you. Thank you, Paul. On to Naomi, Mike, then Alex. Um, yeah, this week we uh, were supposed to also, uh, we extended the invitation but to go to uh, testify for ICWA being overturned. Uh, I was informed that uh, that has been rescheduled for sometime this upcoming week. Uh, we don't know what yen, <laughs> we don't know when yet, um, but as soon as I get that update, I will put it in the chat and um, also you know, forward that on to any student and encourage all students and advisors, faculty, honestly, everyone possible to come and testify for this because it is very um it's just very important that we don't let the government take away our kids. So, yeah. Paul. Oh. Um, Naomi's update reminded me that uh, this morning um, I was made aware that there is a bill that's going to be heard uh, next Wednesday on the 12th, SB 23254. Uh, this is intended to ban no-knock raids in the state of Colorado. Um, it's going to be heard at 1.30 from what I understand. And so this will be an opportunity for folks to testify on a um, on a major reform on, on the way policing our communities works. Um, oh, there's a lot of wrong, wrongful deaths that happen as a result of these no-knock raids. It was a no-knock raid that killed Breonna Taylor. Uh, and so I would encourage anybody to, um, I'm getting more information on this from um, the people that told me about it. And I would encourage anyone who's interested to join with me and we can go either submit a written testimony, you can go to the Capitol in person and speak some truth to power. I'd welcome it. Um, our state has is always punching up in terms of, uh, you know, what we can do uh, better in Colorado, and we can set a national example for how this this can be done. Um, and so I'm optimistic that something like this can pass, especially if it gets good student voice on it. Thank you, Paul. On to Mike, then Alex. Hello, friends. So um, this is just a little housekeeping. Um, I've so I work in CME. I also usually the first one in the office throughout the weekdays, I usually open up the office. Um, this is in regards to our office. Um, but on several occasions, I've found that our office door is not closed, in fact, unlocked during the night. Um, and this has happened too much to kind of be like, it's, it, it, it's a problem. So, um, but we should, I think we should do something to address it. Like, hey, have some office hours or something. Cause I mean, this has happened way too many times with the history of Tivoli stuff getting stolen. I mean, People breaking met media literally this semester. I mean, there was a guy yesterday who the police went around talking to who was literally on all the door handles literally just yesterday. So um, if anyone, you know anyone in the office, you know anyone um, there, I mean, I would highly recommend that we start like, hey, make sure these are the rules of the office. If you're going to be here after hours or without a counselor in the office, then these need to be followed or else then we need to start putting some rules in the office. 
So just an announcement on that. Well, um, I agree, Mike. I've seen it in the morning with the latch unlocked, and so it is kind of a concern. Um, I got my laptop in there, so I'm a little, I'm a little concerned too. Um, I think too the door is in some disrepair. You know, we we recently got a quote from Armando on what it would take to make our door handicap accessible, um, and I think we ought to that as a council. Um, but yeah, just uh, there might be an opportunity to feed two birds with two birds with one scone. You know what I mean? And uh, I mean, maybe get a get a better door and uh, solve the latching issue. Thank you. On to Alex, then Taylor. Um, so I agree. We should definitely have some <clears throat> office hours for the door. Uh, Dan, I would like to partner with your project on the on the inmate thing. And um, we were saying before, does that include include people who are on parole? Good, cool. Justice impacted. In, if you identify as justice impacted, you're welcome. Awesome. I would very much like to help with that. That's all. Thank you, Alex. On to Taylor. Um, speaking of housekeeping, I've noticed that our office is often kind of dirty. Kind of has, um, there's always things all over the tables. And as a general reminder, I think um, always remember to put things back the way you found them and leave your space nicer than you found it. Thank you. On to the advisor updates. Going once, going twice, and sold. On to the elections update with Jody. Hello, good afternoon. Oh my God. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, so the updates, town hall. Um, just a reminder, it's going to be in the Tivoli Turn Hall. In, on Wednesday next week for 12, April 12. Oh, oh, what? Sorry, Tivoli 440. Um, and it starts at 3.30 p.m. And make sure to RSVP by Monday next week at noon. But the earlier, the better. Thank you. And um, also the number of applications are 18. It was going to be 19, but I was looking at the emails earlier and um, someone sent like an online application and then there wasn't like a signature, like an actual signature. So it was like an electronic signature that it was just typed up. Um, so yeah. And another thing, if you haven't done the orientation, you cannot campaign. Um, and make sure you send your bio and your platform tonight by 11.59 p.m. Um, that's going to be up that's with the ballot so that um, when you hover your mouse and the I button, um, people are going to see or, you know, be able to read what's what you're about. And um, yeah, again, the earlier the better. Thank you. And in addition to those bios, the reason we put that time frame on there is because I'm planning on making social media posts for all the candidates that submit their bios, platforms, stuff like that, as well as updating the website. So send it in. If you send it in past that time frame, I'm not doing a second round of updates on the website. It's just how it's going. Naomi. Do you want us to, if we already sent in our bios, but we didn't send a picture, do you want us to send you in like an updated picture? Does it have to be professional? Like You can send whatever photo you want. Please send it to elections. because That's where I'm getting all my info from. Don't send it to me. Okay, um, so then Jody, if you don't mind, so that um, the emails that you keep sending us that are from, I think it, I think it's from student elections, but it says you and so to, to that one, not your guys' personal email, right? Yeah, so it's student elections at msudenver.edu. Word, thank you. Taylor. You're, um, I wanted to ask a question to elections. Um, can you tell us the names of everyone running? Good question. Um, you know what? I'm going to just read it for funsies. OK. I've been breathing through the mic. Uh, Athena Rose Landy, Matthew Rathburn, Jacob Mar Marshall, Michael Warner, Michelle Collin, Christine Nergard, Gabriel Trujillo, Ree Varco, William Coates, Alejandro Casillas, Paul Nelson, Thomas Cheney, Naomi Jaquez, Denny Palacios, Alexander Horton, 
John Nelson, Nathaniel Jones, and Tristan Smith. Correction, it's Hawkes, but thank you. All right. Um, did you still have a? Oh, no. Beautiful. All right. We are moving into our public comment time. Public comment is 3 to 3.15. If you're a member of the public in person, let us know if you want to use your time. If you are in the chat, please put your name in the chat and that you want to use public comment. All right. We will take a five minute pee pee potty break and then we will come back at 306. All right. 306. Be back here. Pee pee potty break. Don't say that again. <laughs>
Welcome back, everybody. We are at 306. Hope your restroom break was great. All right. Um, we will continue on to uh, old business item A, SHC funding approval. Who? All right, Mike, floor is yours. So, yes. So, um, I don't have a formal document for this, but like, so last week um, we were given a presentation by the Student Honors Cou uh, Cou Council for funding. Um, so I can just give you kind of an update on where our budget looks like. So at the beginning of the year, we allocated 7% um, of our budget. Um, so that's about $12,000 to this effort um, to fund student orgs on campus. Um, Kenny, if you have them, we can bring it up that spreadsheet if you want. Um, but so they gave a presentation last week. Um, unless there's any questions, I motion to. Um, they're they're um, it was three thousand dollars. They're asking for the max amount. Three thousand dollars. They're asking for the max amount. I second that we call it to question. All right, we have a motion to call the question, and it has been seconded. Um, Anybody opposed to calling the question right now? OK. All right, we'll go around the tables. Um, yeah, go Paul. Yes. Taylor. Yes. Alex. Yes. James. Yes. Gabe. Yes. Dad, yes. Stephanie. Yeah. Naomi. Yes. Bree. Yes. Dan. Yes. And Mike. Abstain. All right. Guess what? It passes. All right. Next steps, um, Mike, will you be able to work with Armando and the student org to ensure that they have what they need? Correct. Yes, I will send an email now. Thank you so much. Wonderful. Thank you. We'll go on to new business item Bravo um, resolution to purchase 12 copies of Robert's Rules of Order. Paul, you have the floor. Thank you, Chad. Um, I'm going to go ahead and invite <coughs> any counselors that would want to add their endorsement in the last, just as we're here. Um, I'll endorse that. Excellent. All right, I'll go ahead and add Dan. So this is a resolution uh, resolved the student government will obtain 12 copies of Robert's Rules of Order. I've written it in collaboration with Alex Horton here, and it's been endorsed by James Vargas, uh, Gabriel Trujillo, Michael Warner, and Dan. And uh, it starts like this. So uh, in the, unless anyone's opposed, I'm going to read it. We believe that providing each counselor with their own copy of Robert's Rules of Order, newly revised 12th edition, will help ensure that our meetings run smoothly and that all counselors are able to participate effectively in our decision-making processes. Whereas the student government, the Student Advocacy Council, recognizes the importance of adhering to proper parliamentary procedures during meetings, whereas Robert's Rules of Order, newly revised 12th edition, is a widely accepted guide for parliamentary procedure, whereas the Council has previously passed Resolution CR 22-1, which requires all counselors to read and familiarize themselves with Robert's Rules of Order. Therefore, be it, be it resolved that the Student Government Student Advocacy Council approves the purchase of 12 copies of Robert's Rules of Order, newly revised, 12th edition for $15.19 a piece for a total of $182.28. This total will be allocated from the Budget Committee's Small Purchases Budget. Be it further resolved that the Student Government, the Student Advocacy Council will distribute these copies to all counselors and make them available for reference during council meetings. Be it further resolved at the end of the council's term, the 12 copies of Robert's Rules of Order will be returned to the Student Government's office. That's it. And motion we move into discussion right. yep we'll go into discussion start with stephanie then mike i almost wonder if it would be benefit if it would be a benefit to purchase online copies so then we can reuse them but i'm not sure that's just an, a question that's coming to my mind mike or uh, sorry Paul, that's direct response let me ask are you asking me you're just raising the question for discussion Okay, one thing I will say is it is available online as is, and so I'd almost think that that is an option we have and have had. I just think that having physical copies makes it more accessible for folks um, to have a physical copy um, to use as a reference. Um, and, you know, we we have as a council had 
you know, uh, trouble in the past running the meetings at times. Um, not to, you know, say anybody in particular has. We we as a group have have um, you know learned a lot over the course of this last year and how to do that. And I just think that this would help kind of prepare the next council in a better way. You know, this was a gift from Nickel of CCD, and it's been um, really helpful, honestly. And kind of use it like a dictionary. You don't read the whole thing cover to cover, but um, you can look up what's what's relevant to what you're doing, and it can be really helpful. Hey, uh, Mike. Um, I'd just like to make a friendly amendment that this come out of the budget committee's fund. Um, we had the funds to do so, and I think it'd be super easy that way. So. Quick point of clarification, Mike. I've included your amendment in the language. You might have just missed it. I must have missed it. My apologies. No problem. Hey, okay. I uh, I heard you loud and clear, and we got it in there. Uh, Naomi. Uh, I think I'm with Stephanie. Um, I don't think that necessarily we need to purchase them just because I'm here for the, you know, sustainability side of it. Trees matter. Um, but I think that we should all have a copy for sure. And I think that they should be on standby during the meeting. So when we do violate something within the book, it can be called out directly. Um, and I feel like maybe that's a task we could add on to somebody or see if Kenny would be somebody who'd be like, hey, y'all ain't following the rules. Here's where it says that you're not following the rules within the section. Um, I think that'd be something cool to do. That way we're saving some trees and we're also you know, utilizing this very important book, um, because I do agree, Paul, I think it's something that we should utilize um, more often. Taylor, oh, did you have a direct response, Paul? All right. We'll add you to the stack. Taylor. Thank you. Um, I just want to say I kind of think Robert's rules are kind of dumb, personally. Um, but besides that, I agree that 12 copies seems a little excessive in my mind maybe four to six and it can be more of like a library situation where people can just check them out um those are my thoughts thank you to chad all right um i also think it's overkill to to be purchasing these that's a thick book man i'm not reading that i didn't read it even though cr 22-1 told us we were supposed to a full-time college student, I think a lot of us can resonate with that. I don't even have time to read for fun, let alone read that. Um, and the fact that it is online, as well as there are multiple abbreviated versions that we can use um, as references, I think would be the best launching point for future councils, as well as it is the responsibility of the co-chairs to facilitate the meeting. Robert's Rules of Order is there as a guideline but ultimately it is up to the to the facilitators of the meeting to facilitate it as they see fit. Oh yeah. Thank you, Chad. On to Dan, then Paul, Alex, and Stephanie. <laughs> uh Paul, I like it. Um I if I say I can see where 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 it's coming for maybe not have 12 if it's gonna be returned, kind of if it's gonna be a library situation, but maybe if we have 12. If say people are going to be in multiple committees and could be using this for multiple years, maybe they can opt to keep the book um, just so that that's something that they can use and utilize for their student orgs. Um, I don't know how reliable it would be if someone's, I mean, if someone's going to take the book and read it, they're really going to be something that's probably going to utilize for 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 um, a while. So I do support this. Um, if the students can't keep it, I guess I would support maybe getting less if it's going to be in a library. But if an individual wants it, it's going to read it and wants to keep it. Maybe, you know, maybe we have a little bit more than than four, uh, maybe 12, but maybe a little bit less. But uh, I don't know if that's something you want to add in there, but uh, I'd understand if not. To make a motion, we limit the remainder of discussion to 10 minutes. Is anyone opposed? So moved. On to Paul, Alex, Stephanie, then James. Uh, you'd recognize me, but yeah, I think you would be. Um, if we're following progressive stack, I believe I'd be lower in the lower in the stack there. Sorry. Um, I, I, I OK, so I think like four copies is probably reasonable. Uh, we should all of us should download the online version and familiar familiarize ourselves with the abbreviated version. Uh, Paul, do you feel that it is a friendly motion to say four copies of Robert's World Order? I think every counselor should have. Um, so first I'll answer no. 
but I, uh, I just wanted to say, I think every counselor should have equal access to these documents. We, we talked about having a flattened structure. And if we had counselors, some of which had them, some of which didn't at any particular time, there'd be a certain level of imbalance in that. Um, I think, you know, the online copy has been available this whole time and that has not worked. We shouldn't continue to do what hasn't worked, but instead try and do something different. Um, one of which would be equipping people with this, this document, which I wouldn't expect anyone to read cover to cover, but we've affirmed now, I think over three times that we do use Robert's rules as like a parliamentary procedure. Um, you know, we don't hit everybody over the head with every little bit of fine print, but it has been useful on several occasions and we should continue to carry out the work that we've agreed on and voted on as a council. It's not so much optional as it is something that we've democratically uh, affirmed as a group, something that, you know, really shouldn't be rejected by individuals on the council if it's something that we as a group have voted to, to do. You know, um, the stuff we vote on is the work of the whole council. Thanks, Paul. On to Stephanie, James, and Dan. So just, I was just going to propose a friendly amendment to decrease the amount, but it sounds like you're not in interest. So I will, I'm done. Thanks, Stephanie. On to James and Dan. Uh, personally, I'm okay with the 12 copies only because, uh, you know, life happens. Sometimes things go missing. Sometimes things get damaged. Um, I'd rather to where we have ample of copies. Um, I do agree with Paul that the Roberts rule has been available to us all year long. And I can probably test that many people have been probably Googled it. Um, and our constitution does state that we do follow Roberts rules of order. So it is something I believe that if you're going to be on the council, you should be at least informed with. Um, but as saying that these aren't personal copies to keep. Once your term is over, they, they remain within the student government office for use for all council members. Um, so that's just all I'll see on that. Wonderful. Thank you, James. On to Dan. I like the 12 too. Um, the, the last wording there, the, at the end of the ter council's term, 12 copies will be returned to the student government office. Is it, um, what if somebody like you or an individual who's going to use it for the club or committees and stuff that they're building would like to take a copy? Is there is that going to be a way that they can if, say, the majority of counselors don't use it anyway, they're just sitting on a shelf? Is that some an option that's open or something that could be added in there, Paul? There are 12. Everyone will have access to a copy. And so um, we wouldn't necessarily have to worry about availability. You know, um, not everyone would have to carry it with them at all times, you know, like a Bible or anything. Okay. But it is something that we could have. Uh, available to all members of the council. And so, uh, yep, to answer your question. Thank you. Okay. Um, if there's no further questions, I motion we call the question. Second. Okay. All right. Um, I'm going to go in random order because why not? Gabe. Alex. Yes. Paul. Yes. Yes. Dan. No. Naomi. Abstain. Mike. Yes. Bree. Abstain. Stephanie. No. Chad. No. James. Yes. Taylor. No. All right, give us a second, please. I know that wasn't you. That wasn't you. All right, um, that resolution passes. Um, Paul. What? Five what yeses, is four noes, two abstains. It does pass. Thank you, everyone. On to the next order of business, which is the resolution to support First Amendment rights of students nationally. Paul. Thank you. So this is a resolution to support, like Taylor said, support First Amendment rights for students nationally. It was written by uh, myself and Alex Horton, um, and it's been endorsed by Gabriel Trujillo, James Vargas, Ree Barco, Michael Warner, and I would take a moment to invite any other endorsers if they wanted to add their name to the list. You can have my endorsement. Endorsing the First Amendment uh, free speech stuff, the, the whole entire First Amendment? Yep. Yeah, I'll endorse that. All right, so we've added Taylor and Lucas, sorry, Taylor, Lucas, sorry, and Dan. 
as well. Pardon the flip up. So I'll just go ahead and read it. Whereas the MSU Denver Student Government, the Student Advocacy Council has previously voiced firm support for the rights of students and all persons residing in our country to exercise their First Amendment rights. Whereas the First Amendment states, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or abridging the freedom of speech or of the press or the right of the people peacefully to assemble and to petition the government for a redress of grievances. Whereas on March 6th, students at the University of South Florida were peacefully protesting the removal of diversity, equity, and inclusion programming in Florida schools, colleges, and universities by Governor Ron DeSantis and were attacked by University of South Florida police just five minutes into their protest even after they'd begun complying with orders to leave the premises. Whereas these students were grabbed, put into chokeholds and groped by USFPD and subsequently charged with a litany of unlawful charges in violation of their First Amendment rights. Whereas in addition to the charges, students have been met with a student code, with student code of conduct hearings and an attempt by the USF administration to eliminate student protests on campus. Whereas according to the Tampa Bay Times, two weeks, quote, two weeks after being arrested while protesting at the University of South Florida, Chrisley Carpio said that she received a letter indicating the school planned to fire her, a move that statewide union that a statewide union is calling unfair. The firing of a student worker on the basis of their involvement in a peaceful protest is unlawful and in violation of the First Amendment. Be it resolved that the student government of MSU, the Student Advocacy Council, stands in solidarity with the Tampa Five and calls on the University of South Florida to drop the charges against student protesters. Be it hereby further resolved, we affirm that protesting a redress of grievances isn't a crime. In fact, it is a protected activity under the First Amendment of our country's constitution. Be it hereby further resolved, we affirm that students and student workers have the right to exercise their First Amendment rights without having to face violence from campus police or expulsion, loss of their job, or retaliation by the administration. Be it hereby further resolved, the student government of MSU supports the protection of diversity, equity, and inclusion programming, included but not limited to cultural studies, gender studies, Africana studies, Chicano studies, African American history, Native and Indigenous studies, among other programming classified as DEI related. We support students standing up for the rights of faculty and students in their pursuit of knowledge and truth. That's it. Wonderful. So we're going to open it up to discussion. We have Stephanie, then Dan. Then I'd Dan. like to make a motion. We limit discussion to 10 minutes if possible. Is anyone uh, opposed? Opposed. I am opposed. Okay. So I would like to endorse this. Um, and I say that because not only did this um, affect these students, but it directly affects um, fraternity and sorority life as well. Um, especially multicultural and D9 organizations, since they are inherently diversity, equity, and inclusion related, um, it impacts their ability to access funding, which therefore impacts their ability to recruit, which therefore impacts their ability to have impact on their communities um, and their philanthropies as well. Um, so I endorse this and um, I hope that we can have some follow through other than just this um, resolution itself. <laughs> a quick point of order. Wasn't a motion made? Doesn't it go to a vote if there's opposition? There was no there was second. No second. Oh. I had stated it was unless there's I kind of implied if there was opposition that I'd withdraw. Sorry if that wasn't terribly clear. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Stephanie. On to Dan, then Mike. Um wait. Oh, okay. Sorry, Paul. Okay. Um I, I'm reading this here. You know, I have to bring up Valiant Williams in this because freedom of speech, he had, as well as ignorant is what he said was ignorant, stupid, embarrassing, all of it. He had the right to say it and it was hurtful. But in the United States of America, we have the right to say stupid, ignorant things. Look at Joe Rogan, look at Washington all together. Um, so where you talk about, let's see, limited. Oh, no, one. Oh, no, we affirm that students and student workers, although we're not workers, have the right to exercise their First Amendment rights without having to face violence from campus police, expulsion or loss of a job, like say from the Judiciary Committee or retaliation by the administration. So um, I, I, li I like the sentiment here, but I think it should encompass everybody. Diversity includes everybody. If, if we only heard voices of people that were opposite of Alan, that's not diversity because Alan's voice counts as diversity, as ignorant as it is at times. So. I, I I really want to endorse this, but um, 
and I'm going to continue to endorse it because of that. But but the thing the thing about it is, is we haven't been practicing First Amendment rights here. And we've been fighting about it and going. And I mean, I mean, I'm in constant contact with Taylor and De, you know the Rag, Dean Ragland and uh, Elise um, over all of this, you know, and having to, you know, and, I mean, so yeah, that's what I have to say for now. I'll be back. Um. Thanks, Dan. On to Chad, Naomi, Alex, and James. Cool. So, um, as I, I did a bit of research on this, um, in your fourth, whereas, um, whereas these students were grabbed, put in chokeholds, this, that, and the other, um, this is this is hearsay, as well as uh, the official police report has said that um, they were inciting violence against the police as well. So I don't feel like it is appropriate for us to um, make a stance on something where we do not have all of the information. That's all that I have. Thank you, Chad. On to Naomi, Alex, James, then Paul. I just want to like first state out there that, of course, that's what the police report's going to say. They're never going to tell the truth because they don't want to seem like the bad guys. That's how every single police report goes. And I'm not against the police, but I'm also not necessarily for the things that they say they don't do. Um, so and that's just been proven time and time again through police cams. And I mean, if as many people say that they saw how the story really went down throughout history, it's kind of hard for me to believe that when the police are saying that they're telling the truth, that they're actually telling the truth. So that's just my personal opinion. And I'm sure the opinion of many other BIPOC individuals as well, especially in low income and poverty driven communities. So let's just kind of keep that in mind as well as we think about that statement from the police report. Um, and I say that in quotations because it's nothing that I have against what Chad was pointing out, but just in general, the police report. Um, so thank you again, though, for pointing that out. That gives people another perspective to think about that. Um, I do want to comment, respond to Dan's comment. Although that this man is ignorant, yes, he does have, I'm sorry, the words that were used seem to be perceived as ignorant. And I do agree that we do have a freedom of speech, right? But that doesn't mean that there isn't consequences to our actions. And it's the actions that we're trying to address here. Hence why we have something uh, that was written up by the Judiciary Committee, the constitutional violations by Ali Williams. So we are then addressing his actions, not his speech. And <laughs> I just am really sick and tired of doing this. The Westernized, like I said in the chat, Westernized professional, uh, you know, calm manner. I'm really sick and tired. I'm so tired emotionally, spiritually. This is just so draining to have to sit here on a council and realize that my people are continually being disrespected and we're trying to advocate for ourselves in the best way possible, but we are systematically set up to be erased. And for that to even be put to question is disrespectful, is harmful, and it hurts. And I'm not trying to sit here and say that like we're the only ones, but damn, can we get just a little bit of credibility? And I have zero <laughs> apologetic term terminology to be using right now because I'm not sorry. I'm tired. I am so tired of having my people sat down and be considered gone or just not acknowledged because not acknowledging us is racism, period. And by you denying or trying to cover up or sugarcoat the acknowledgement of that is also racism. And that's just facts. And you're contributing to the oppression of my people continuously and all BIPOC individuals who have gone through that, right? If you are continuing to deny it or to sugarcoat it or to call it something other than what it is, I'm tired of it. And I'm tired of this conversation. This shouldn't have taken this long. I'm tired of our systems being set up the way it is. So, yes, I support this resolution, but we should also be able to support all students outside of this as well. I have a question for Naomi. When you say Dan, my people, on, yeah, go back. Get on a, the we stack. can put you in the stack. Okay. It's Thank not you. your time to pull it. We have um, Alex and James, Paul, Mike, Ree, then Dan. I appreciate your sentiment, Naomi. Um, so the thing I think with Alan is the free speech, but like not shouting fire in a crowded theater, right? I don't know if you guys have ever heard this. It's like an, an analogy where you can't use your words to cause panic, right? Or like, it's like a speech act, like a pragmatic act to just instill panic. So, and I think that outside of just the genocide denial, there were other things that were simply said to incite panic. 
that's so that's that's not really protected in the First Amendment. This resolution, on the other hand, is simply. It's not simple. It's actually it's you know it's not simple at all. Um, um, you know we're just we're trying to stand on a particular side of history, and I endorse this. Thank you, Alex. On to James, Paul, Mike, Ree, and Dan. Let's try to orient the the discussion to the resolution at hand. Thanks. Uh, so first off, I do really agree with Paul. Uh, this resolution is important, and I believe it's best that we stand up to uh, any time type of oppression to students' freedom of speech, especially to protest uh, on ongoing issues on their campuses. I mean, that's kind of the point of student government is we bring this to the attention of those in charge that like there are issues that students are facing and many of them don't feel comfortable or don't have enough of that power to get up and speak for themselves. And so that's why we're here uh, to continue to be their voice and to speak louder. Uh, so I think this uh, resolution is very important and sorry, Taylor, I know you told me not to, but I have to quickly address Dan. I understand how frustrating the situation has been, but I have to quickly let you know that the judiciary committee since that it was told that this was a constitutional violation has ceased and desist on all forms of that. I don't know why you continue to bring up that the committee is out to get him for a speech. This is plainly false and not true. I have. I'm getting it ready for when it's my turn. <laughs> and quite frankly, I was following through on a vote that we as a council took from December when this committee did not exist. All right, so you can be mad at me, but it is my job and all of our jobs is when we vote on something and we approve it to follow through. That has been the biggest issue that we have had is to follow through. So again, I understand that's not what some people wanted on the council, but a lot of people were affected by this and a lot of people were hurt. We had students coming in for weeks telling us that this made them uncomfortable, unsafe on campus, and they just did not feel like this council represented who they were. And that hurts to hear because I don't want any person, regardless of who you are, Native, Indigenous, White, Black, Republican, Democrat, I don't care what you are. If you are a student on this campus, I want to represent you to the best of my ability. So that's all I will speak. I'm also in agreement with Naomi. My committee is tired of the Allen situation. I know this council is tired of the Allen situation. I would ask that we just stop with it. The whole speech thing is done and over with. I understand a lot of people keep bringing it up, but nothing is being moved on that. It's over, it's done with. I made sure of that back in February. Thank you, James. On to Paul, Mike, Ree, then Dan. Remember, this is discussion about the resolution. Thank Thanks. Um, I wanted to address the idea that, um, you know, uh, we should adopt the official narrative of the USF Police Department on this. Um, they have refused to release security footage from the event. The only footage that we have, and there is ample footage being provided by students that were there of what happened. Um, that's the only footage. They refused to actually show the footage because uh, I believe it's because they understand that it would contradict their narrative. You go through history at the long, long, long list of civil rights violation that this country has engaged in. And at every step of that way, there were justifications of law and order, of some official narrative of, well, they were being unlawful, they were being violent. When in reality, I would encourage everyone here who's in question of the nature of this protest to go look at these videos, see for yourself. You don't have to take my word for it, go look at them. Five minutes into a peaceful protest where students were exercising their voice, you know. So the Constitution, uh, the Supreme Court has has reaffirmed that students have the right to protest on campuses, right? An attack on students' ability to exercise their First Amendment rights, to protest for redress of grievances, to have their voice heard, is an attack on student rights everywhere. What happens in Florida, Texas is soon to follow. What happens in Texas, Nebraska is soon to follow. We don't live on an island isolated from the other members of our country. We are very much smack dab in the middle of it. And we need to be conscious of that. And as conscious students, we need to recognize the history of what's happened in this country. Naomi's clear on that. And I stand with everything she said on it. Um, this isn't an attack on police or anything like that. Um, I, I, this is an attack. Well, this isn't even an attack. This is a statement of solidarity with those students who were brave enough to stand up against an attack on DEI programming by Governor Ron DeSantis. They're burning books down there, people. Right. Burning books is a first step on the next thing of burning people. And it, it's it's terrifying to see what's happened in Florida. Right. And as conscious students, we need to take a stand on this issue. It's critical that we do it. 
even if we don't agree on everything all the time, we can agree on one thing. It's that students and faculty and, and, and everybody on a university has the right to pursue knowledge and truth and has the right to protest if the time comes to stand up when something something wrongs happening, and we have the right to stand up and, and, and speak out about it. Um, five minutes they protested. Uh, they had a banner. They, they, uh, they were told to leave the building and they complied. As they were complying, you can watch video of these students being put into chokeholds, being slammed into the concrete, and being groped. You can, you can see it, and I would encourage folks to do so. It's uh, it's it's a dark period we're in, specifically in Florida, and um, I would really encourage people to um, stand and stand with this solidarity statement. You know, that's all. Really, that's all it is. And I agree with uh, Stephanie that we need to follow this up with more action, because when we talk about budget cuts, you know, happening in both UCD and at MSU, you know, we got a budget shortage ourselves. Um, my fear is that those departments that were last added will be the first ones out and or the first ones considered for removal. A lot, oftentimes at the tables of power in this university, when they're talking about budget cuts, they ask about, well, what departments have a return on investment? And when you subject cultural studies to this question of what is our return on investment, you try to boil it down to numbers and dollars. Uh, it's not at all a good way of approaching these things. So um, this is a simple way we can support a, First Amendment rights that we all been talking about this whole time. Uh, two, student rights to have voice. And, and three, stand against a, uh, a reactionary wave that seeks to drag us back to uh, a, a time where these kind of things weren't being taught in the schools. Students on this campus fought to get Chicana studies on the campus. You can look up archival newspapers and you can see the students and faculty, Mecca, youth, uh, La Raza Unida, uh, and others that, that stand up for the ability for students to, one, be able to speak Spanish in schools, have these kind of studies taught, and to be involved in the creation of these of these departments. And so, um, Paul, I want to make sure we yeah. have time for everyone to speak. That's it. That's okay, all I got. Thank you. Um, on to Mike, Re, Dan, then Naomi. Thank you all. Um, I'll be brief with this. Um, once again, um, I'll re endorse this. I 100% agree with all you said, Paul. Um, this resolution, I mean, students were, I mean, I support students everywhere and um, things happening in Florida are awful. And um, I agree 100% with that. I would like, I'm, I'm sorry to, I'm making a statement, Ryan. I'd like to remind this council that the Judiciary Committee is here for accountability. And every right, they have every right. We gave them the right to investigate and dish out consequences. And that is seems to be forgotten on this council. Um, yeah, we were given... Every authority, we have every authority to do what we want. In regular SGA, with the presidency, people are fired without pro due process. We have due process here. Um, and I'd just like to say, James, you have been victim of so much attack. You've been threatened to be sued. So I appreciate the work you're doing. And I mean, I appreciate the work you're doing. I mean, it's not said enough around here. Okay, on to Re, then Dan, then Naomi, then Taylor. So just quickly, can you just shift the page down to where it's talking about what the resolution is? OK, so. Right to exercise First Amendment rights or expulsion or jump. OK, that's fine. I don't know. I, I think I was I was trying to address um, what Dan's point was about Alan. And I think in Alan's case, I just want to quickly say there were reparative and informative work sessions with the Restorative Justice Coalition to inform him about the things that he seemed not to know. And those were things for personal development that he just chose not to do. So it was completely different than this. And I support this resolution in its entirety. I'm glad to have my name on it as endorsing it. Thanks. Thank you, Re. We're on to Dan, Naomi, then Taylor. So I support this. Um, I don't want to see what happened at this school happened to our buddy Paul here who protests regularly to try to get, you know, demilitarization militarization of the police. Um, and because James won't talk to me, I'm going to address something else. James, good work for all the work you've done. I definitely didn't threaten to sue you. I just said if I were you, I'd watch out because it seems like a harassment. Last week, you said you're going to accountability and going something to the dean's office. This constitution that you wrote and wrote pretty much alone was not ratified by the institution. And so I'm not going to drop the issue. We're going to be tired of it, tired of it. There'll be more core requests if there has to be. But the thing about it is, is I, I endorse the freedom of speech in the First Amendment. 
I know for sure 100% Allen had multiple hour meetings with Elise, Barone, and Raglan constantly. So that being said, I endorse this, but I will be voting no on it because I endorse the freedom of speech and potentially Alan learned something from that. So that is professional development. Okay, um, on to Naomi, then Taylor. I would just like to kind of like talk on the part of, you know, these students getting thrown around and, you know, having acts of violence committed against them. I think that even according to the police report, as you know, Chad had um, had read to us, sorry, words are hard at the moment, um, that even if this was true, even if the students were exhibiting violence to them, um, <laughs> the police are supposed to be trained to restrain them without harm. Because if individuals who are in, um, you know, what are they called, group home facilities, where people who have mental illnesses exhibit these violent behaviors. I used to work in one of them. We were trained to handle these individuals with care when they exhibited violence in a manner that was not harmful to them, but they were able to restrain them. So if everyday people, because I didn't need any pre previous training. I was 18 years old when I had this job. If I could be trained on how to do that, why aren't the police being trained how to do this? Why are they getting the excuse of, I was afraid for my life, so I pulled out my gun in every other situation where these students or these people are trying to stand up for themselves, which I get at some points, 100%, they do need to exhibit violence back because they're, they are still people and they still need to protect themselves. And I get that. But these situations where there's students who are unarmed, really, we think that that's okay to like do as a, to, to endorse as uh, Americans, as people, as humans, that's not okay. Are they need to be trained specifically to handle situations like this where they do not cause physical harm. It is not okay. Um, just want to keep that as a perspective in your guys' heads. Thank you, Naomi. On to Taylor. I call the question. Second. Second. Right. <clears throat> um, Paul. Yes. Taylor. Hi. Alex. Yes. James. Gabe. Yes. Chad. Abstain. Stephanie. Yes. Naomi. Yes. Bree. Aye. Dan. I endorse the sentiment, but no. Mike. Yes. All right. Resolution passes. Um, are there any next steps we need to go over with this? I don't think so. All right. Moving on to the next item of business, um, resolution calling for the resignations of counselors who have abdicted, abdicated their role. Paul, Alex, you have the floor. I'm going to motion that we table this until next week so we have some time to work with the Judiciary Committee and uh, pan this out further. I know that Paul has uh, something else that he would like to add. Second. Yeah, motion's been seconded. I'd just like to voice my opposition to tabling it, but, you know, so we're a little split as authors here. So we'd probably have to raise it to discussion and or just to vote if we're going to table this. All right, let's, I mean, if you want to discuss, if we'll move into discussion about tabling it. Okay, Paul. I'm opposed to tabling it because uh, this is a very light resolution. This is a resolution calling for the resignation of counselors who have abdicated their duties. Um, and so it was really it's an ask for folks who have taken a major step away to just do the right thing and and uh, resign. Uh, these funds can go back into our budget and go back into whatever programming we have left for the remainder of the year. In fact, at the end of the year, we're to give the remainder of our budget, uh, with the exception of the fund that we had set aside uh, to the food pantry. All of this would be better use of the funds than continued payment for uh, counselors who have abdicated their duties. And there's a point on the second half where it says this, uh, that we should make time in our next meeting to have council members provide a positive account of what advocacy they've engaged in this year. I think this accomplishes two things, really. Um, it, one, gives us all a really good opportunity to positively account for what we've done as a council. We've done a lot. I think there's a lot that goes unnoticed. And like for us to um, list what we've done and really just kind of summarize the, uh, the year, we can really, um, you know, make that information clear and, and concise. 
Um, and in the other half, it'll make clear who has abdicated the role. And so um, I, I feel like it's a light thing. We ought not to table it. We ought to at least vote on it. All right. Uh, we're still on discussion about tabling this resolution. Mike. Um, I just have a quick question for Alex. What is your um, reasoning for tabling this amendment? I'm curious. My reasoning for tabling this is so that way I can work with James and the Judiciary Committee to pan some of this stuff out within our Constitution. Uh, and so there's not two separate documents working at the same time. We can align these things. And yeah, that's that's that. All right, Taylor. Well, I just want to be I just want to clarify about this um, resolution. This does not remove anyone. It's calling on them to resign, and that is completely optional to the counselor, correct? That is correct. Thank you. On to Dan, then Stephanie. Um, I think most of us here advocate all the time. I want to know, um, is the definition of what we're looking and what we call advocating in here, just so we kind of have a baseline to go off of? Because I remember Alan asked what advocating is. Stephanie said, whatever it is to you. But Paul, what were you thinking? And Alex, what were you thinking advocating is? And then I have a follow up. So advocate to me means to leave behind. So say you were giving a task and you instead decide instead of doing the task to leave and not do that task. Okay. I, I I think of just at the base level, um, it's an abandonment. And so think of abandon as like a synonym oh. for abdicate, but this is more specifically for like a role or a position. Oh, no, I hear that. I'm advocate, advocate. I know I knew thank, I'm, my apologies on it. I got bad voice. ears, so that's, that's, my, that's on me. So advocate to me is intentionally broad, right? I know not everything that we do as advocates happens right here in this room or even in our office. I know many of us are out, you know, in classrooms, on the streets, um, et cetera, in the, in the Capitol uh, doing advocacy uh, in the broader sense. And I want to actually be mindful that, you know, um, we may not all understand all the advocacy that we're doing or that other people are doing. When, when we may think that a counselor has abdicated their role, they may in fact have been engaging in advocacy elsewhere. And I think that giving people time in the next meeting to describe what they've done is just a positive way to address that. Okay. With, with that being said, I support this because um, uh, then, so everybody has a chance to share what they're advocating and not just attacking one person, I might be on more more on board and less um, attacking the, the the process that James is going about doing that. Um, so yeah, um, for now that's all I have. I um, support this. All right, uh, Naomi, and then James. Oh, I apologize. I thought Stephanie. Or um, yeah, my only thing that I was a little confused with was the two documents that I felt were kind of conflicting with each other. And that would have, that would have been the, I can't remember the official name of it, but where the judiciary committee would be responsible for continuously checking in with counselors to ensure that they were advocating appropriately or at least doing their due diligence. So that was, it just seemed a little copy, not copy paste, but a little bit of a reiteration of what we already had. Um, so that would be my only contingency with this is that it's kind of already there. But if you plan on kind of doing that or like revising with the Judiciary Committee, I would be more in support of it to just see what it is that would be new than what we already have existing. Paul, you can respond. Then we have Naomi. Um, I definitely didn't want to necessarily set up an alternative framework because I understand we do have a framework for addressing um, for addressing like, you know, we have bylaws that describe a specific minimum amount of time we're supposed to be spending um, even in the office. And um, my fear is that that has not been applied in a way that has essentially weeded out those who have totally abdicated the role. People have been able to persist in abdication um, and continue to receive a check from the student government. We have students paying for student advocacy counselors I don't believe we're doing student advocacy, and I just don't think that's right. Those funds could be better spent. Uh, Naomi, James, Chad, Dan. I think this is something that the majority of people, and I'm not trying to speak for all people, um, but when it comes to advocacy work, coming in this role, I think, as a student was very enlightening for me, but this is something that I came into knowing that it's going to be 
very hard emotionally. You're going to get your feelings hurt. You're going to get called out. You're going to have people tell you no. And those little wins mean absolutely everything to you. But that means that you're putting up a fight, right? When you're feeling all these things and people are coming at you and telling you that you're doing things wrong or that you're, um, you know, you're constantly coming across these obstacles, it means you're doing something, right? Other than us addressing this one individual on one thing, we've never had to address anything else for them because I've never once heard them speak up for or give a platform for individuals who they were trying to represent. And in my opinion, for advocacy work, you need to at least give your voice up to those who don't have a platform for their own voice. If you're just talking to people for advocacy work, that's great. That's beautiful. But then come here and be like, hey, they said this. They want this. Um, you know, this group of people doesn't want to be acknowledged or, you know, put on a platform, but they want their voices to be heard through mine. So that's one way to do it, right? If you're not going to do any actions, because we get it, we're students, it's really hard for us to find time to write a resolution or to go out and start a protest or to go, you know, talk on the board of trustees. It's really hard for us to make that kind of time. But the matter of is, is at least speaking up for the students. That's the bare minimum you can do. The bare minimum, if not send just at least an email with these students' names on it or their concerns or something. But advocacy work can't just be sit here and defined as, oh, like it's whatever you choose to, because then that could also mean that like, you're doing nothing. That means something to you. That means advocacy work to you by doing nothing. And I think that like maybe doing nothing in a sense of like just sitting here peacefully, that's something, right? But you're still doing something. But what are you representing? At least if you're sitting peacefully, you're sitting here representing something, right? And I can't agree that doing nothing is a form of advocacy work. And that's all I've ever seen from individuals um, that were so to call out in this resolution. Thank you, the Naomi. Point, quick point of clarification, if it's all right. Yeah. Um, this resolution is not written in a way that would call out any one individual. I didn't want to write it in an antagonistic fashion so that it would be well received. Thank you, Paul. Um, on to James, Chad, Dan, then Taylor. Uh, so I just quickly want to point out that um, Yes, uh, Alex is right. We do kind of have a similar system where we set up in the Judiciary Committee. Um, so like we've kind of done it before. You were able to, if you feel like someone in the council is not doing work, you were able to request that we ask them to present that work. Um, but as I had conversations with the deans on this whole uh, process is they don't necessarily have to answer or give us an answer. There's no way we can force them to tell us exactly what they're doing. Um, so that has been like the biggest issue. However, we, you know, it is in the Constitution that we request it, and if you don't present it, it can be considered a violation since you're not willing to share the work. All things considered, we have a Sixth Amendment that talks about the certain rules, and it's very basic. Uh, as far as work and advocacy work, we only request like five hours a week, and that includes these meetings. That includes being in the office, you know, talking to constituents, doing work. Um, so it's very bare minimum stuff. And then just the two things you pointed out, Paul, uh, the only other issue I have, um, actually it was the the dean one the other issue is if for some reason let's say we did ask someone to resign like gabe gabe we asked uh, to resign and gabe's like okay and resigns the money wouldn't go back to the budget because as for our eighth amendment we do rank choice voting which means we would immediately have to look at the previous election and get whoever's next in line so then those funds from gabe would then go and transfer to the new council member so just wanted to point that out Okay, Paul, yes. I would intend for this to supersede that portion of the document so that the funds would go back to our budget. And I would um, I would suggest uh, that what we have does not work because not a I mean there has there has been abdication of roles. Um, I wouldn't want to point out individuals in this resolution. Rather, I would want to give us some time, maybe next week or the next after. For folks to positively present their work and then we can reckon with the facts there but we need to do something like the fact that we've allowed students to um spend their fees on on advocates that do not advocate i mean it doesn't make any sense thank you paul we now have chad dan taylor then alex I'd like to call the question second yeah same all right we are calling the question on tabling this resolution a lot of discussion for tabling. All right. Um, we will start with Paul. Tabling for one week. All right, Paul. Aye. Oh, no. Correction. No. 
Sorry, I got confused all with is the against tabling with all the talk. Taylor. Hi. Alex. Hi. James. Hi. Gabe. Abstain. Chad. Hi. Stephanie. Yes. Naomi. No. Three. Dan. Ye yes to table. Mike. No. Go back to re. It's like on hold. Re. Going once. Going twice. And abstain. Thank you. All right. The item is tabled for one week. Um, we will move on to item E, amendment of section one of the Constitution. Paul, you have the floor. So this is amendment of section one of our constitution to ensure inclusion and accountability. Uh, it's been written by myself. I collaborated with Alex on this. Um, I would in invite endorsements. Um, and I'll take a, just a brief moment here. All right, in lieu of endorsements, I'll continue. Whereas SGTSEC is committed to promoting student well-being and improving the student experience on campus. Uh, whereas SGTSEC values equality, respect, and inclusion for all students. And whereas the current language of, S of Section 1 of SGT Sachs Constitution has failed to explicitly include students with disabilities as a protected class, and whereas the current language of Section 1 of SGT Sachs Constitution has protected hate speech in the form of denial of the genocide of Native and Indigenous people being espoused by Council Member Alan Williams, be it resolved that SGT Sachs shall amend Section 1 of its Constitution as follows. Section 1, the students... Members of SGT SEC shall use the council's power and position to improve student well-being and promote the student experience on campus. The students will always be the priority of the council's mission and goals. All students will be treated as equals and with respect. There shall be no exclusion on any student on the basis of race, gender, creed, religion, ability, or class. Any council member who violates these terms shall be held accountable by the council and risk impeachment from SGT SEC. Uh, to be clear, there is a struck through portion there that describes political opinion. Continuing, be it further resolved that SGT SAC condemns hate speech in any form, including the denial of genocide, and will not tolerate such speech from its council members. Be it further resolved that SGT SAC will review and update its policies and procedures to ensure that they align with the values of inclusion, equality, and respect for all students. Be it further resolved that SGT SAC will take all necessary steps to hold council, me council members accountable for violations of the Constitution and Handbook including but not limited to impeachment, be it further resolved the SGT SEC will communicate these changes to Metro State University administration and student body to, to ensure that all stakeholders are aware of our commitment to inclusion and accountability. That's it. I motion we move into discussion. Thank you. We have Dan, Chad, then James. So, okay, I, <clears throat> I like this. Mm -hmm. This is good. Um, but when, when you stroke the political opinion, Paul, you have your leftist communist book group meet in the office and SDS. So there's political opinion being involved in there. So I, I think maybe we should have a lot of political opinion. Also, hypothetical Allen aside, what if somebody wants to learn how to be more culturally aware because they come from a different generation and they come in and they're, Naomi, I hear what you're saying. Hypothetical. Let me practice. And they don't know saying that genocide didn't happen is wrong. Is there an option in there? I think it's wrong. The United States government doesn't say so though. And is there a way for them to have like a chance to address that and correct it? I'm not saying Alan did that. I'm just saying, it, or is this automatically, they deny somebody's creed or religion and, and they're out. I mean, I can understand that, but the word genocide denial, if someone doesn't know like an old schooler, like my dad, he didn't know, but he has good intentions. And I'm not saying, you know, that's what Alan had. So is there a room for like learning opportunity in here? There is no restorative justice, no consensus building at all. That's just, I, I'm unclear on, on that. Can I address the comments made about myself? Yes. Thank you. In a country that has deported and uh, put to death uh, political radicals, for you to red jacket me in this meeting is disgusting. It's true. I think it's important that we reckon with our history as a country. Um, and I would ask that you not engage in McCarthyist politics at this table. I think it's truly disgusting. 
What myself and my peers engage in is very much a political creed. It is not a political opinion. A political opinion could be the anti-Semitism espoused by Adolf Hitler. We need to stress test our constitution to the point of asking, what does it allow? Well, political opinion is anti-Semitism. Political opinion is white supremacy. Political opinion is anything and everything, but a creed or a political philosophy or anything else that the Office of Diversity and Inclusion has actually used in language is something more along the lines of what we should protect. But political opinion is anything and everything, and that's just wrong. Thank you, Paul. On to Chad, then James, Naomi, then Paul. I find it incredibly inappropriate for us to, to limit the, the potential speech of our counselors in the form of political opinion, in the form of anything. Um, like we've just been talking about this whole meeting. This is a First Amendment thing. I just looked up the definition of political opinion, the opinions of persons relating to government or the conduct of government or related to political parties authorized to participate in primary elections in the state. So we're not allowed to we're not allowed to have a political opinion. We're not allowed to discuss our political opinion at all. We're not allowed to bring that into our conversation as we see fit. I, it makes no sense to me that we would limit the speech or the ability of speech of anybody when it goes directly against the First Amendment that we've been talking about this whole time. That's all I have. I'd like to make a point of clarification, if I may. <laughs> Thanks, Chad. Go ahead, Paul. Uh, there is no attempt in this resolution to limit speech in any way. This is a resolution that would remove a protection of political opinion. So all opinions ought not be protected or insulated, right? People may espouse them, but to, by default, protect all political opinions is a mistake. We ought not to make that mistake. We have already reaffirmed our commitment to free speech. This in no way as it is written would be an infringement upon free speech. It would stop us specifically from protecting all of political opinions. There should be no occlusion of any student regardless of any political opinion. You're telling me that someone could come onto this council with the political opinion of anti-Semitism and remain as protected by our bylaws? It's not right. Thank you. On to James, Naomi, Paul, Alex, then Chad. Uh, so first thing, um, the one thing I do like about this amendment is including ability. That was actually completely my fault for overlooking that. Um, as you all know, I'm getting a little taste of that life, on, but I don't have the same experiences that many people are unfortunate to have. So to anyone who like sees this and didn't realize it was in there, I'm deeply sorry. Uh, but for the rest of the amendment, I cannot also vote yes in it because of a couple of reasons. First off, you state that the language of this constitution is what has protected Allen's Denial of genocide, which is not entirely true. That is the protection of the First Amendment of the United States Constitution, as well as the Colorado State Constitution. Uh, second, you say we're going to condemn hate speech in any form, including the denial of genocide. That's something that this council has already voted on and done. Third, uh, kind of to what Chad said, is political opinion is everything related to government. And I think everyone in this room has at least a political opinion to government. And so, yes, there are things we don't like. There are things that I hear that I'm like, wow, I cannot believe someone would believe that. But they are still protected by the First Amendment. This wouldn't really change anything. And second, this section is dedicated to the students. Uh, that means the public. I don't feel comfortable saying that you can't have, like you cannot have your political opinion because you might have something that I despise. We are representatives. We have constituents that have completely different outlooks on life and politics than I do. But that doesn't mean I'm going to silence them. Um, and then the last one was, we will take all necessary steps to hold council members accountable for violations of the Constitution Handbook. Uh, that, that is something that's already being done inside the Judiciary Committee. We are constantly talking about violations that are made by every council member from the smallest thing to the biggest thing. So like these are being done, but they're being done carefully, which is why I'm in constant contact with the deans to ensure that any process we take is done right so that we can avoid any further issues in the future. Thank you, James, on to Naomi, Paul, Alex, Chad, then Dan. Um, I do can appreciate Dan's comment about educating individuals because we're not educated properly in America when it comes to realistically anything when it comes down to it, especially in grade school. Um, and I think that, I mean, specifically for, you know, indigenous peoples um, of the northern, you know, Americas and whatnot, they talk about how 
you know, oh, they came in. Oh, here's the Cherokee trail, trail of Tears. And uh, they don't talk about like the removal act and everything else. Right. They give us just a very sugar coated version of, oh, your people were here. Now they're not. Let's move forward with history. Look at all these wars that we won. Right. And they don't use the word genocide. They don't use the word erasure. Like they don't use anything like that because they don't want the conversations to be hard and affect children in a negative way. But that's the sad facts of America. And it sucks to suck, but you got to learn, period. And the more that we desensitize these younger generations, the more that they are going to have trouble coming and dis- into, I'm sorry, um, infiltrating and dismantling these systems that have constantly oppressed um, individuals of many different backgrounds. So I think that it's a good opportunity that when someone um, you know, violates or hurts someone's feelings or their sense of identity in any way that they be given the opportunity, like we did with Alan, for example, to give them a, give them the resources, right? Because it's not easy to find these resources on campus. So give them that resource, give them the opportunity to make that decision for themselves. And if they want to educate themselves, great. And if not, then obviously there's nothing we can do for them. Um, so that sucks because we can't do anything because it is freedom of speech. And if they are doing all the actions that are accordance to our bylaws and Sucks to suck. It's just another systematic oppression, but we should give them the opportunity to educate themselves. um, So that way, you know, they can help at least have the mentality of now people can see them as choosing to be ignorant rather than just being ignorant. Thank you, Naomi. On to Paul, Alex, Chad, Dan, and Taylor. As our constitution is currently written, um, the bit there it says there shall be no exclusion of any student, regardless of race, gender, creed, religion, political opinion. That is a protection of these things. Um, we are protecting all political opinion. There are political opinions that ought to be excluded, specifically like those who would seek to bring white supremacy to a ta- to a to an institution that serves a multicultural student body. Those political opinions ought to be excluded, right? There, free speech is not absolute, right? You can't shout fire in a crowded theater. You shouldn't be able to hurl racial epithets at people. And at the end of the day, you shouldn't be able to carry uh, positions that are fundamentally anti-human to this table. As it is written, it protects those things. There is no move in this resolution to exclude them, right? You would simply be removing the protection of those anti-human positions, right? People can still hold them, but they're just not going to be protected at these tables. If you come to this table, you start hurling racial epithets at people, you start calling for genocide, or you start trying to his- revise history, um, which is the first step to uh, committing a genocide, um, we're going to do something about it. And this would give us the ability to do something about it, to actually take action against that kind of speech. As this is written, it protects them from that. This could be used to protect somebody who could come to this table and, like I'm saying, bring anti-Semitism to the floor. And should we try and remove them in any way, take accountability and have somebody removed from the council for doing that, we couldn't do it. Because as it says here, there shall be no exclusion of any student, regardless of political opinion. And so, you know, we need to stress test this. Think of the very worst thing that could constitute that a political opinion and understand that that political opinion would be totally totally protected and welcome as this is currently written. This isn't an act to exclude those people, but, uh, you know, but make it so that if we had to exclude someone who was an anti-Semite at this table, otherwise we could. And I think as an institution that serves a lot of different people, we should. Thanks, Paul. On to Alex, Gabe, Chad, Dan, and Taylor. Um, Okay, so I collaborated on this, and I think all of us agree that ability is a protected thing, right? Like, we're all on board with that, yeah. Uh, The the political opinion thing is tricky, and maybe what we should do instead is be very specific about the sort of speech that isn't protected. Um, Because, you know, well... um, you know, I mean, I don't know. Um, I'm I, I'm open to leaving political opinion on the document, but I think it does. I there's got to there's there's got to be something, man. That's all I got to say. Thank you, Alex. On to Gabe, then Chad, Dan, and Taylor. Okay, cool. Okay, so so many, so many. Um, first. 
while I understand where Paul is coming from, right? And I see like the what if scenarios, right? Let's not forget that the university, that we're under a university, right? A university that has um, the freedom of expression, an actual document, right? That says the First Amendment to the U.S. Constitution and Article 2, Section 10 of the Cardo State Constitution guarantee individuals the right to freedom of expression. Um, CRS 2354, 102, so many numbers, 2018, authorizes the trustees of MSU's uh, Metropolitan State University of Denver to establish rules and regulations to govern and operate the university and its programs. The trustees retain authority to approve, administer, and interpret policies pertaining to university governance. The trustees authorize the president of MSU Denver to approve, administer, and interpret policies pertaining to university operations. Um, and, and then, so MSU Denver welcomes diverse and divergent perspectives in its governance and decision-making processes. Therefore, MSU Denver students and employees have the right to assemble peacefully, to communicate ideas freely, and to discuss any issue affecting the university community without fear of institutional discipline or retaliation. And definition of freedom of definition of free expression. Free expression means the unrestricted exchange of ideas, regardless of topic or medium. Free expression includes, but is not limited to, all forms of peaceful assembly, protest, verbal communication, holding signs, circulating petitions, and distributing printed or digital materials. Free expression does not include expression that is not within the First Amendment protection, including speech or conduct that is credible threat, fraudulent, harassing, obscene, defamatory, or otherwise unlawful, that evaluates the privacy or confidential confidentiality rights of students or employees that is primarily for commercial purposes, including the sale, promotion, or distribution of products or services, or that violates other university policies, including policy governing employees and student conduct. And so while, yes, you know, there is, you know, already a structure in place by the university, and while things like anti sept oh my God, I can't speak today. Thank you so much. Um, those are still like, that's harassment, right? And so that under this is not, is not protected by the university. And so while I understand Paul's um, uh, ideas and stuff, there's still like things already in place in the university protecting against these things. And this could potentially go against this freedom of speech that the university is already implemented has already implemented. Yeah. Oh, wait, um, hold on. Wait, I'm sorry. I just had to add And last thing is, in addition to this, like the part of, um, let's see, where is it? No, I had it. Um, wait, 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 wait. Oh, it's oh, right there, okay. Um, let's see, the trustees, uh, authorizes the treaties of MSU Denver to establish rules and regulations to govern and operate the university of its programs. So therefore, these are like the rules by the trustees, right? And so this would be us going against the trustees that already have this like power, you know, and that power is like over us. So yeah, okay, thank you. I have a direct response. I think um, we could keep the political opinion in there, but then parenthesize as protected by federal and state law, right? And and all three, uh, federal, state, and university law, as protected by, and then include the political opinion. Yes, Paul. Um, what you read there, Gabe, I believe the passage of this resolution would bring us in closer parity with that document, right? It's specifically saying that there are there is speech that can constitute harassment, etc. Um, and as of right now, we make the exception that no, we will actually not exclude anybody from this council for holding any political opinion. Political opinions, we don't make any distinction between those that harass or don't harass. And so by passing this, we A, we maintain creed, which is a broad scope. And then we actually tighten this up a little bit and bring us in greater parity with the document you just read. So I just want to offer a minor disagreement that this would in any way attack free speech when in reality um, we would maintain uh, anyone's ability to have this speech. Uh, they'd be able to do it but that wouldn't guarantee them inclusion in this council. So 
Um, I don't think that um, any political opinion should have guaranteed inclusion in our operation because we can all think of a dozen political opinions that are fundamentally anti-human, genocidal, et cetera, heinous. In Paul, fact. just to clarify, do you not consider Alex's suggestion a friendly amendment? I do not. Okay. On to Chad, then Dan, Taylor, Alex, then James. So um, if we were to look at this as political opinion, this is by extension opinion. We are trying to limit individuals' opinions. That's this exactly what's happening here. Um, and in doing so, this is incredible. This is like a, a hyper overstep of the student government. We should not be doing this at all. And then question for you or whoever wants to answer, who determines what political opinions the students are allowed to hold? Who gets to decide that? Is it the majority? Does the majority of the student council get to determine that? So I think I'll, I'll go ahead and respond. I think there's a lot of misunderstanding about what this says. What you're speaking to, this doesn't limit anything. This doesn't limit anything, nor would it put in place some framework where people would decide what's appropriate. This specifically removes protection of all political opinion from inclusion on this council. That's exactly the, the, what the notion getting. that we should, and I'll respond to your question as you'd asked me to. Um, the notion that we should include all political opinion on our council is is a dangerous one. It's one that displays, like, in all honesty, an, an ignorance of the history of this country, right? That, yeah, I just I would like us to speak to what it says and not to what it doesn't say, right? I'm not out here, you know, saying, oh, let's. Let's make a morality police or anything like that. This is let's speak to what it says and not to what it doesn't say, please, because the public listening deserves to know the content of this resolution, not be misguided into thinking it says something that it definitely doesn't. So didn't answer my question, but thanks um, again. This. What the question was, who determines what political opinions may hold? And that's exactly what this this is, as I read it and as I think other people are reading this is exactly what's what's what we're getting at is that we as the student government will be determining what political opinions individuals are allowed to hold. I'll, I'll move on to the next person. Thank you. On to Dan, then Taylor, Alex and James. So it says all students will be treated as equals and with respect, but then yet they can't have a political opinion if student. That's what it says right there. If a student gets elected by the student body, whether if they're a Nazi, if you have a problem with it and we can't get them off the council, I mean, there's other ways to handle it and you could also protest them. Um, you know, and because I see, you know, I mean, I'm just saying we then you can't be protesting in front of the thing with your name tag on. I mean, this is it's in it's incomprehensible to say that we can't have political opinion. Also, upon talking with President Janine Davidson, I, I was trying to tell James this, he doesn't want to talk to me, but we should ratify the Constitution that we wrote here with the institution so then they can uphold it. And that's what th that is what um, I think should be done. You know what I mean? And because at this point, James wrote the Constitution. James is the judge, the jury and the and the executioner and the student university hasn't um, ratified it. So I don't think we should be able to do anything about political opinion or restrain speech at all. If students vote a person in, whether the person's ignorant or not. Second thing, my father was raised, he's 71. He's very progressive. He, he, you guys would get along with him great. But he was raised by his parents hearing the N-word and all these crazy things in the house for like years and years and years. And so it's been taking me like three or four years to help dismantle some of those things that he has in there. So if an older person that's not as woke or per politically incompetent as like, say, Re or, you know, anybody else that's older on here. I mean, sorry, Re, it's wise as me. I get actually not me now because I'm standing up for a Nazi. But um, uh, but w the thing is, is we cannot limit speech at all, at all, because then we're getting into lawsuit territory and the university is not going to protect us from limiting the speech. I've talked to so many attorneys already over this and they're chomping at the bit to take the case. That's why I was just making a warning like, hey, y'all be careful because there's people ready and willing and the university isn't going to protect it. I'm trying to look out for the university because if the university is the bigger fish, if they someone could sue the university, it's over. So 
I was just saying, hey, lawyer up, because I mean, this is getting and stepping into some crazy stuff. Plus, I'm constantly talking to Taylor Tackett. I work in that office now and they don't want any of this mess. You know what I mean? Because this could go really, really far, especially with a libertarian attorney or something like that. And there's plenty of them to do that. Um, so with that being said, to tie it around, Alan's an old man who is taught wrong. And so his political opinion and his creed is libertarianism, just as Paul's just as Paul's ideology is his creed. No, I wasn't going to do that. I already did it once just so the students knew. It's fine. Um, so overall, nobody should have their opinion, regardless of how absurd it is. If we have a Nazi on the council and we don't like it. I mean, we can think of 100 different ways to take care of it. Not all of them above board too. So, I mean, there's a lot of ways to handle it, but doing this is ridiculous. Thank you, Dan. Moving on to Taylor. Um, I call the question. I second. Dan. Cool. All right. Let's get into it, friends. All right, Paul. Time for a change. Yes. Taylor. Uh, that was an abstain from Taylor. Alex. And James. No. Gabe. No. Chad. No. Stephanie. No. Naomi. Abstain. Bree. I'll abstain. Dan. No. Mike. No. All right. I think the no's have it, but let's just double check. The no's do have it. Um, this resolution fails. On to the next order of business, which is a resolution to support a card swipe system. Alex and Paul, just as a point of clarification, we have eight minutes left in the meeting, and if this does not get passed in that time, it will be tabled for next week. Um, the floor is yours, Alex. Okie dokie. I will move through this as fast as I can. It's, I hope it passes quickly. Uh, written by myself and Paul. It was with, uh, in collaboration with Dr. Simpkins and uh, Emily Willen. I hope I said that right. Whereas MS, uh, U Denver, SGT, SAC, and Vice President Dr. Simpkins have discussed a card based swipe system program into each student's ID that can be turned on in parentheses optional with points loaded onto the card for the purchase of food that is provided on campus whereas sgt sac have uh, food security as one of our main goals to support the student body whereas sgt sac is opposed to uh, contributing to the prison industrial complex as many of our students have been adversely impacted by a broken criminal justice symptom our system. Uh, we are in strong opposition of partnering with companies that are a part of that complex, namely Seduxo and Armac. Therefore, be it hereby further resolved, we, the student government TSAC, endorse this plan to implement a car based swipe system as it aligns with our goals to eliminate food insecurity on and off campus for our students. Therefore, here, uh, be it hereby further resolved. We as a council encourage other student governments to support a similar model for cohesion on campus. And I'm just going to call to question without opposition because we have six minutes left. Okay. I oppose that. The second. I you have the right to discussion before a vote it's in our bylaws. Great discussion. Can I have I, a four minute discussion. Um, oh gosh. Progressive stack. Progressive stack. James. James, Mike, Paul, Dan, Taylor. I think this is super simple and straightforward. I mean, it does align with our goals, and it's something that the university really wants to implement to help students on campus. So, quite frankly, I don't think there's any need for discussion. So, I called a question. And oh. Well, I want to do endorse. Oh, is there We're going to continue the debate for three more minutes. Well, I don't have a debate. Yeah, so we need to do a debate. No, well, so could you? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna, but I want to say I want to endorse it as the the, the Justice Impacted Student Alliance because so can we endorse that? That's what I'm trying to say. So that's what I wanted to say, and I am total support of that. Okay, 
Um, Onda, Mike, Ben Taylor. So, Alex, I have a few questions. Oh, sorry. Yeah. My apologies. A few questions. So, um, is so is are, is this plan currently being implemented? Are we calling on the university to be implementing? Are we trying to? Are we ourselves assuming government going to implement this? No, no, no. It's none of that. We're endorsing something that Dr. Simpkins had already talked to us about earlier this year. So, we're, as a council, we're just saying, hey, this is something that we agree with. We we like the idea. Basically, that's all this is. Yeah, we're just endorsing. So they're probably most likely then there would be a further resolution to kind of build this system and actually a little bit more follow up on this. Is that correct? Yeah, there. It, yeah, if the university chose to do this card based system, we as a student government then would move further with the university to align with their goals and the strategic planning that would go forth with that. As a council, I think um, I, I wrote this because I had heard other higher ups talking about how maybe we should talk about this. Um, and so I just I, th I think it'd be very easy for us to say, yeah, we agree with this card based system thing that Dr. Simpkins is talking about. And then strategically moving forward, we can work out the details later. Yes, I, I do agree with this. Um, I would like to see the follow up. I'd like to see the advocation like, hey, let's take this university. Let's let's do the I would like to see the follow up on this um, because this is a great idea. This is a great idea. Dr. Simpkins kind of just gave to us and it's I think it's perfect. So but I'd love to see the the, the next steps on this. Fantastic. Go Paul. Thank you. I just want to say this. This is a very simple resolution showing our support for this plan. It would bring us up to par with our sister institution UCD and we ought to do it. Um, it is a step towards solving food insecurity um, and making it easier for students to access food on campus. The fact that you can apply um, financial aid towards this is a, is a, is a, is a good thing. Um, it's you know, not every resolution has to do everything. I think the very limited scope of this resolution is to show our support for this effort on the university, and this can be followed up by other work. But I it has my full endorsement, and um, you know, we ought to just I I, I um, we got excellent. Bring it Taylor, to go ahead. Thank you. I wanted to touch on the prison labor thing that you touched on. Can you discuss that like very briefly? Go ahead and pa uh, pass that over to Paul. So Sodexo and Aramark are two companies that in a variety of ways have participated in the military industrial complex from making use of prison labor, which is often paid far below the minimum wage, um, and also uh, by providing almost exclusive contracts to prisons all over the world on the case of Sodexo. And so when we enter into business with these institutions, we are giving the MSU Denver stamp of approval on their practices. Okay, thank you, Paul. I want to give Dan a quick 10 seconds. Yeah, yeah. So my kind of to go off what you're saying, I, I heard Dr. Simpkins at the the student advisory, student affairs, student advisory board kind of talk about maybe this is since they're the bookstore is moving out and potentially going to be somewhere else. There's maybe hopefully some working of a cafeteria into that area. And so there will be fault. I encourage this to go bigger and expand and push them for, to those further things to further um, do the uh, reduced insecurity on campus. Thank you. Right. Wonderful. We're going to go into voting now. All right. Um, by opposition. Oh. Yeah, let's vote by opposition. Anybody that is opposed, please make yourself known. Ta-da, it passes. It passed. Thank you all for a wonderful meeting. Um, ah, ha, ha, ha. A lot of wonderful conversation had today. Thank you all. Have a wonderful weekend. See, I. Happy Easter.